So today's, I, you know, they always say that you should be a bit more um, honest and like open with your audience. So I decided to leave my McDonald's one dollar Dr Pepper in the shot for for this one, uh, hopelessly out of taste and out of touch. But I think we'll run with it anyways. <laughs> Hello and welcome to I Went to Film. My name is Ryan and I went to film yesterday to go see the new remastered David Lynch film Inland Empire, which was recently remastered and redone by Janus Films. Inland Empire is probably, if you're not a David Lynch fan, one of the movies you've never heard of from his catalog because it is, I think, the most obtuse and the most difficult to get into for a majority of audiences. Famously recorded on a handheld Sony camcorder, though not without a massive crew as some people might presume, Inland Empire is probably the closest thing to David Lynch's psyche that you're going to get outside of his intensely intimate and individual paintings. Famously, the process was a little more complicated than most people will often give it credit for. It looks like it was a movie independently made by an amateur with an amateur camera in a couple of weeks, but it was a multi-month long process that involved numerous actors, multiple countries, and an entire film crew. For those familiar, this film's stylization is most akin to the third season of Twin Peaks, uh, the weirder episodes that are most different from the original. Just incredibly jarring and visual, but deep and meditative. In fact, the meditation aspect of this movie might be the most important part or the key to the whole piece, depending on who you ask. David Lynch, of course, at the time, was getting much heavier into transcendental meditation, and when you watch his documentary Lynch One and see his production process on this movie, it was clear that he was really reaching a complete apex in his dedication to transcendental meditation. That being said, I don't know very much about the movement as a whole. I think a lot of it seems like a scam, especially given recent business decisions by Lynch and his partners, though it seems to be at least somewhat spiritually meaningful to him. Speaking of that Sony camcorder, the original film, as I've seen it only on my television, is kind of ugly. It's a little bit difficult to watch just because of how raw and old tech the Sony camcorder was that he was using, which makes the restoration by Janus Films all the more impressive. It seems like Janus Film went the AI restoration route because a couple of the little parts of the movie where you get a distance shot of somebody look fuzzy and uh, unduly sharp. I know that seems a little bit like a contradiction, but if you watch the movie you'll know what I mean. Look at a couple of the shots where somebody's far in the distance and you'll see that their face has been nearly completely blurred out, but at the same time their hair is a uniform, sharp, blocky mess. It is a little bit odd. Of course, this isn't to say that the restoration was a mistake or even particularly bad. It's a really good one, especially with the way that the color grading has been redone and a lot of the close-ups. The close-ups of Dern in the beginning of the movie in her main introductory conversation with her new neighbor are some of the highlights, but even as the film goes on, it becomes absolutely fantastic. In fact, the end of the movie, particularly the parts where Laura Dern is moving through the dark corridors that Lynch seemingly built on a soundstage, are exquisite and incredibly well done. It's a lot less fuzzy now, but it's certainly not visible. You get a new aura of uncomfort and difficulty in a way that the older film didn't ever quite completely manage. Now, of course, the difficult thing to talk about with Inland Empire and any type of a review is exactly what the movie is. It's famously obtuse, and while there might be some obvious through lines that make it far simpler than most people who call it a drug trip are trying to say, it's still not a movie that's open to everybody and has a lot of interpretations that aren't necessarily correct or incorrect. I think this stems from the fact that a lot of the scenes themselves are really isolated art pieces that fill a bigger hole. With regard to his previous movies, I'd say that it's probably the most similar to something like Eraserhead in the way that it's quiet and meandering, or something like Lost Highway, where the film is a mystery that is attempting to unravel without a certain understanding of temporal or personal relationships. Though, unlike those movies where there are concrete abstractions, the Inland Empire film is far, far, far more difficult to understand, just because it doesn't have a simple, basic through line. It really doesn't want to give you any of the more concrete story and narrative aspects, which is probably the most interesting part of the movie. One thing on a meta sense that I think is particularly interesting is the way that David Lynch might be just becoming jealous with amateur filmmaking, and a question about the lines between reality and fiction in the age of the internet. 
See, I'm recording this on an EOS R2, which is a particularly nice camera that I use to do short films. Now, at the time, the camcorders and the Sony camcorders that David Lynch was using for this movie allowed him to make full-budget Hollywood films with digital editing. Perhaps he realized and noticed that there was going to be a boom in internet media making where you could make anything you wanted, the most outlandish visuals, the most confusing things without needing anybody to help you, and he wanted in on it. But on the other hand, there is a little part of the movie where it sometimes feels like a bit of a clash. Sometimes it feels like it's a full Hollywood movie shot like a Hollywood movie, and other scenes just feel like home videos, like they were shot by anybody. The line between movie and real life is going to completely fall apart, and as we can see, it did when the digital camcorder and digital camera became so good that you could film anything. Now we're using the same cameras we use to make movies as we do to make personal videos. Maybe this is why Inland Empire is Lynch's final movie. It's a swan song for the cinema. After a pretty much perfect mystery film like Mulholland Drive, done on film with beautiful cameras, the next thing, naturally, is to try to explore digital. But what he might have found at the end is that digital is so free, so open, that you don't even need to do movies anymore. You can explore the art as you see fit. When you shoot on film, you gotta come with a complete shot list, you gotta know what you're doing, and when you're doing it, you have limited film, and the editing is far more complicated. Now, we of course have to open our minds a little bit. Uh, in the Lynch One documentary, David Lynch affirms that some of the scenes in the movie with naked women and dancing were put in the movie because he likes naked women and dancing. There is obviously not a symbol for everything, and the locomotion scene, no matter how weird it is, no matter how much you might want it to fit into a little pet thesis about what the movie symbolizes, is probably just David Lynch thinking that attractive women dancing is meaningful. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't have additional subtext. He's making a Hollywood movie. Of course it's going to reflect on the way that women are portrayed in Hollywood. And I think that's probably the most meaningful thing you're going to take from a scene like that. The things that you can talk about with this movie are just endless and endless and endless. And if I don't stop now, I don't think I will. But there are a few questions that of course are always left over. For example, why is the film often so comfortable and interested in making a relationship between the cold streets of Poland and the bustling, neon-lit streets of Hollywood? Um, why was there ketchup on the man's chest? I guess if not to be the stabbing wound, maybe? Where do rabbits come in with this? I think Rabbits was a short film done previously around the time of Mulholland Drive that somehow find its way into the plot directly. I don't have any answers to any of these questions, and frankly, I don't know if anybody else does. I hope they don't, because it just makes for a gorgeous and intimate and interesting movie. Maybe the last thing that anybody should be doing is looking for objective answers in a movie that's just trying to elicit a feeling. And that's where I think the theater experience is the proper and, frankly, maybe only way to watch this movie. When you watch it at home, you watch it with everything around you, all of the stimuli and context that you now have to adjust to. But in the theater, you are forced to look at that dark screen with the giant faces, and you slip into not only an interested state, but a fugue state, where you just watch things as they happen, and they phase over you. It's a three-hour movie, but it doesn't feel three hours, because the whole time you're not really thinking about the time or the clock. You're not thinking about how long it's been. You're just slipping through emotions, one by one, and falling into whatever meditative trance state that Lynch is trying to bring out of you. If you live in one of the cities that's showing this, I would highly recommend it. It might be a little off-putting at the beginning, and it certainly is a scary movie. There's one part that I think is truly horrifying. But I do think it would be a valuable experience just because of the way it challenges your preconceptions of what a movie should be and should look like, and affirms something completely different that I don't think you're going to see anywhere else. Inland Empire is just a beautifully emotional experience, more than it is a movie. And I think it's probably best enjoyed with blue skies and golden sunshine all along the way. Everyone, have a great day.